Hi, I recently turned a minivan into a pseudo camper van, mostly self-sufficient van type situation, and I thought I would show you what I did. This is not something I'm doing full time, and this is also just a minivan, it's not a full out van or anything, and it's not a complete van build by any means. Everything that's in the minivan is removable. Um, it's not insulated, so it's not gonna do really well in really hot or really cold temperatures. But yeah, I just went on my first little trip with it, and I am super happy with it. It's um, pretty cheap, pretty effective for what it is, and it was pretty quick, so I thought I would share that with you. Part of this was filmed before I ever went on a trip with it, part of it's gonna be filmed after, so I'll try to piece it together in the least confusing way possible. And of course, I'm sure the more I use this thing, um, the more my opinions will change and things in the van will probably change, but this is where I'm at right now, so yeah hope somebody finds this useful. This is my camp shower. This is a pretty easy and quick DIY. It's also very common, so I will link a tutorial on how to do this in the description box. But it's basically just a weed sprayer linked to a kitchen hose. You pressurize it with this handle and then you have water. I use this multiple times a day to do dishes. Um, also just things like if you went hiking and you think you might have walked through poison ivy, you can uh, clean your legs off real quick. Or if you're at a sort of muddy campsite, you can clean your feet off before you get in the van at night. Um, I used it to take a full shower one night when I was in a campsite that was really in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I do have a Planet Fitness membership, so this is not going to be like my only means of showering. But yeah, these come in one and two gallons. This is a one gallon. I think one gallon works great. Um, unless you're planning on like full out washing your hair very frequently with this thing, I think one gallon is a great size and I love this thing, super useful. The soap that I use when I'm doing dishes or washing my hands or taking a shower is Dr. Bronner's. You get like a foaming soap pump container. These work great for Dr. Bronner's. This is about one part undiluted Dr. Bronner's soap and then like eight parts water and then that acts like a foaming soap. Dr. Bronner's is organic and biodegradable. It's pretty safe to just be used in the outdoors. Obviously don't go like dumping anything right into a body of water. But um, yeah, Dr. Bronner's, you don't have to feel so horrible about like doing your dishes outdoors. This is the Avalon Bay Eco Wash. It's basically just a small washing machine. I brought this with me and if I'm being honest, I did not do laundry with it, but I did use it to store my dirty laundry. So it became a hamper, still served a purpose. I used to use this when I lived in an apartment that didn't have a washing machine in it and I didn't like having to lug all my laundry to the laundromat every time I wanted to do laundry. So I would do my laundry in my bathtub most of the time. If I'm being honest, it doesn't get your clothes as clean as a normal washing machine would, but it does a pretty good job. I would normally do like five or six loads in here before I felt the need to go to the laundromat. But yeah, you just put your dirty laundry in your water and detergent. I use undiluted Dr. Bronner's because again, it's pretty safe to just go into the environment. And then you turn it for a few minutes and then it comes with this drain and that's how you drain it. And yeah, pretty easy. And for drying things, I'm just gonna line dry. I have some paracord that I'll either set up in the car or between two trees if I'm parked somewhere for a while. So yeah, of course, laundromats still exist too. So you can just go to a laundromat. So this is my toilet. I decided to go with a composting toilet. So not something that has to be bagged up and thrown away every time. And I decided to add a urine diverter to it. So this is the urine diverter. Uh, from what I hear, the key to reducing smell when using a composting toilet is to keep liquid and solid waste separated. Um, so like it could be as simple as just using two different containers, but uh, for my purposes, I added a urine diverter here. I'm kind of proud of how this came out. I don't think I've seen anybody do this exact thing, so I will explain what's going on here. So starting out with just a five gallon bucket, and this is a five gallon bucket toilet lid that you can get at like Walmart. Little edit here, I went on to explain how I tried to seal the five gallon bucket toilet seat lid with weather stripping because the lid was not airtight. And while I applaud my ingenuity, and I think that was a good idea in theory, in practice it did not work so great. So what I ended up doing was just cracking the lid off of the five gallon bucket toilet seat because the lid was worthless to me. But this as a toilet seat is still good. And then I keep a normal airtight seal five gallon bucket lid on the toilet almost all the time and I just switch it out for this when I'm using it. And honestly, once I switched it for the normal five gallon bucket lid, there's like no issue with smell. It's great. So the five gallon bucket itself is where the solid waste is going to go and I'm just going to throw a layer of pine pellets down and then after every time it's used, throw some more pine pellets on top of that. So pine pellets can be bought at a lot of hardware stores or outdoor stores as either wood stove pellet fuel or horse bedding and it's about six dollars for a 40 pound bag so it's pretty cost effective. So for the urine diverter I bought a transmission fluid funnel but I bought the type that already has a hose attached to it. So this funnel and this hose 
already came attached to each other. I cut a little bit off of the top of this funnel just to give it a slightly lower profile and then I screwed this funnel into the top of the bucket and um, I mean the screw was just poking through so I covered it in silicone sealant just to make it slightly less sharp. Uh, this is very messy looking but I think it's going to get the job done. And then I drilled a hole in the side of the bucket and fed the tube through that hole. Then I drilled a hole in the top of this container and fed the tube through that hole. And then I sealed everything again with silicone sealant very, very messily, but I think it's sealed, so it doesn't really matter how ugly it is. In theory, liquid waste should go into this funnel, through this tube, and it will empty into this container. And then this container can just be unscrewed and dumped wherever this container, I think, used to hold those pretzels that are filled with peanut butter. I wanted something that had a decent capacity but was also short enough that the tube wouldn't have any kinks in it while draining. So that is my setup. And then also I added a sink drain into the funnel just because I don't want any pine pellets getting in here because when the pine pellets get wet, they do disintegrate and I don't want this tube getting clogged at all. So the liquid waste can be dumped pretty much wherever. The solid waste can be bagged up and thrown away. Um, it can be actually composted if you know how to do that. I don't know how to do that, so I'm not gonna advise you on that. But it can also be dumped into pit toilets or porta potties. A lot of the time at campgrounds, if you're gonna have a toilet option, that's what you're gonna have anyway. So I ended up just dumping mine into like a pit toilet a few times. If you're using some sort of brown matter like wood chips or pine pellets or coconut husk, whatever, obviously don't dump it into a toilet with running water or plumbing because that can mess up your plumbing, but pit toilets and porta potties, great option to just dump the solid waste. I love this toilet, it is so convenient. Um, it's great. I'm gonna try to explain the bed frame that we ended up building. This might be slightly convoluted, but I will try my best to stick with me. I went to Big Lots and I bought one of these cube organizers for $30. This was originally a two by three cube organizer. So it had one, two, three, four, five, six spots originally. And then I sawed it in half. So now we have two pieces that look like this. We added some plywood to the top and to the back to stabilize this because one of these is gonna go at the head of the bed and one of them is gonna go at the foot of the bed and basically there's going to be a piece of plywood on top of these two where the mattress will sit and I will show you that in a second. But also, this is great because it works pretty well for storage. I went to Dollar Tree and I got some of these boxes. The larger ones fit pretty good in the full-size cubes and the smaller ones fit pretty good in the half-size cubes. And then we just drilled some holes just in the side of these shelves so you can hook bungee cords here. So in theory, while I'm driving, it should prevent things from just flying out of the shelves. And here's what the other one looks like. Same basic setup. And here it is with the plywood on top. This is where the mattress is gonna sit. Underneath here, we've got a two by four and a one by four on that side just to support this. So it's not gonna collapse under my weight. And then the two by fours on the ends of both of these shelves keep it so that this piece of plywood shouldn't be able to slide too far forward or backward and the one by four in the end keeps it from sliding this direction too far but there's also lots of space for storage underneath here i'll show you how it looks in the car here's what the bed looks like in the car as you can see decent amount of storage underneath this mattress is just a normal foam pad that i cut down because the width of these shelves is much thinner than a normal single bed the space under here isn't filled up yet but we added these drawer pulls to the shelves and then added this piece of wood, added a notch here to keep it from sliding too far, but that can just slide out of there. And then hopefully when this is more full, because there is gonna be more stuff under here, hopefully this piece of wood will generally keep a lot of this stuff from rolling all over the place while I'm driving. Also, all three sections of this bed are secured in some way. The shelves are lashed to the floor in multiple places, and the piece of plywood that holds the mattress is clamped to the wall, so nothing should be moving around too much. Update, yeah, I was flying around windy mountain roads and everything stayed in place. One more important piece is these window coverings that I made. I will link tutorials to this. I basically followed some tutorials with a few exceptions. Most of the tutorials that I've seen for making window coverings use some pretty sturdy, like insulation material, and I went with stuff mostly from the Dollar Tree, so I will explain what I did. I went to the Dollar Tree, I bought a bunch of normal like windshield coverings, and I cut them out to roughly the size of all the windows in this car, and I also bought some black tablecloths, also from the Dollar Tree, very flimsy plastic type stuff, and I sewed those onto the backs 
of these window coverings. And then I went to a hardware store, I got some rare earth magnets, just some small strong magnets, and I made duct tape tabs, and these magnets stick to the frame of the car, and that's mostly what keeps these window coverings in place. The windshield coverings also came with suction cups, so there are suction cups on a few of these because the magnets didn't cut it. Here's a view from inside the car. Honestly, yeah, it looks like garbage, but I think it'll get the job done. The black material on the backs of the window coverings is basically just to make it a little less obvious that I'm in here. This is what it looks like from the outside on the windows that are in the front of the car, so yeah, that doesn't look so great. But on the tinted windows towards the back of the car, I think it actually does look pretty good. Can't really tell that there's a window covering there. Update, these window coverings are very good for what they are. They keep the light out at night and they keep people from seeing into my car at night and that's really all I wanted them to do. I will say a few of these I fit pretty well to the windows and a few of them I didn't fit so well. So a few of these, the suction cups would come loose or the magnets would come loose in the middle of the night and I would have to readjust them a few times. Also, because they are from the Dollar Tree, they're very flimsy. Um, when I'm removing them from the windows, I need to make sure to go to every magnet tab and every suction cup individually and remove it because I did try to remove one of these with kind of one motion and I ripped it a little bit and had to tape it back together. But for what they are, they're great. For cooking, I just have a little propane stove that I got at Walmart. Um, at night, I generally try to keep the propane tank out of my car, but I also have a carbon monoxide detector with me in the car because propane can be spooky. And for my cooking things, I have this little shallow pot that is big enough to cook like a whole box of macaroni, and in it I have a knife, spatula, cutting board, utensils, and a bowl. And I keep some extra stuff hanging just from the ceiling on a carabiner. This is what I use instead of a colander to drain the pot. This is one of those reusable paper towels that I think a rag honestly does a better job, but whatever, I already had it. A pot scraper, loofah gourd that I use as my sponge, a funnel, some stuff. Also a milk crate is an easy way to store four gallons of water and free water is pretty easy to come by so these can be refilled a lot of places. I also brought a tent with me even though I don't plan on staying in the tent that often but it's a good option if it's way too hot in the car at night it could be a little cooler in the tent. It's also a great way to claim a camping spot like if you leave in your car for a few hours throwing up a tent while you're gone for a few hours is a good way to say, hey, please do not take my spot. Yesterday I met with a woman who also had recently done a minivan conversion and she gave me some good ideas that I have not implemented yet, but I think I probably will. One thing, she had those bug net socks that kind of go over your front doors so that you can roll down the windows and bugs won't get in. So that's a good option to be able to keep the windows open at night. She also had those little rain guards that go at the top of your doors around the windows so that she can keep the windows in her car cracked a little bit at night even if it's raining and then rain won't get in. She also bought a bug net screen that is big enough to fit over a garage door. She said she got it at Aldi and she attached magnets to it and then she opens her back hatch and then attaches this bug net screen all around the back hatch and then it creates kind of like a screened in back porch at the back of your car and I think that was a really good idea. I think that's all I have to say. I hope this was helpful or useful to somebody or at least mildly interesting and if not, sorry. Bye.